Hi guys, welcome to this beginner's guide on AWS Athena. I'm Johnny Chivers. I'm a data engineer Monday to Friday with over 10 years experience working in the financial services sector. I'm five times AWS certified. I like nothing more in my free time than making AWS videos for my YouTube channel, passing on that knowledge. So in today's video, we're gonna look at AWS Athena and what it is. What is AWS Athena? It's an interactive query service that lets us analyze data stored in S3 through standard SQL. It's completely serverless, so we don't have any infrastructure to manage, and it runs on the open source Presto engine. But why use Athena? Well, to normally get the benefits of Presto, you have to spin up a Hadoop cluster. And running this infrastructure can be costly, both in terms of provisioning the servers and getting the operational overhead in to look after them. Athena removes this barrier to entry as the underlying infrastructure is fully managed by AWS. We just pay for what we use, currently costing $5 per terabit scan. It brings big data technology to the masses on a very cost-effective manner. But when use Athena, there's a couple of main use cases. One is when you want to query data stored in S3 quickly. As it's only costing $5 per terabyte, it's very cost effective just to write a simple SQL statement and look at maybe a CSV file that you've been given. The other use case is when you have multiple users running big data queries. Looking after big data queries on Hadoop clusters, especially on an ad hoc basis, can be very costly from an infrastructure perspective, but more so an operational perspective where humans need to constantly look after those underlying servers. But removing that human element of the operational overhead to look after query services on big data that would usually run on something like EMR with Hue and Ranger makes Athena cheaper in every use case I have ever used it in than more traditional ways of querying data. Therefore, it's an essential in any AWS big data environment. The best way I always find to learn about these services is by doing so we'll jump onto the console now and get a bit hands-on. There's other video lessons on my channel that cover Athena in depth, such as the AWS Data Lakes 101 series. So once we've done this and you want to learn a bit more about S3, Athena, big data technologies, I advise you look at that series. Okay guys, that's me logged into the AWS Management Console. First thing I'm going to do is go to Athena. So if I just type in Athena into the top, we'll end up on the Athena homepage. Now there's a couple of things we need to do. One, we don't have any data, as you can currently see. And two, we have to set up a query in an S3 location as this is the first time that we've used Athena. So let's create an S3 bucket. Let's create a folder in that S3 bucket where we're gonna upload some data that I already have. Okay, so to do that, let's go up into Amazon back onto the main console. Let's go to S3. Let's go to create bucket when we land on S3. Create bucket. Let's create a new bucket. I'm just going to call this Johnny hyphen shivers hyphen Athena hyphen demo. I'm just going to create it in its default region. I'm going to leave everything else. Let's create that bucket. Let's go to the bucket itself and let's create a folder. So this folder is just going to be called Athena hyphen results and we're going to create that folder and the next thing we're going to do is create a folder and we're going to call it data and as you guessed it this is where we're going to put the data and what we're going to do is upload some data so I have data on github that I've used for another tutorial the links in the description below if you go and paste that link in we'll land on the github let's download um, the repo as a zip now I'm just going to open up that main file so off screen here as you can see I've brought in that main file and it's that demo lake data CSV we want so back on the S3 now we've downloaded the data let's go to upload let's go to add files let's go into my downloads let's go into that folder I've just opened and that CSV data perfect that should be everything let's just upload and that's 100% uploaded. So back into the bucket itself then, by hitting close, you can see that we have some data. On the Athena, first thing you need to do is set up a result location for your queries in S3. 
So you have two options. If you see this dialog box, click on that button. If you don't see that, then it's also in settings and then it should ask you query result location. So I've done it that way, or you can click on that one and you get the same box. Go to select and we want to go to the uh, S3 pocket I have just created, that Athena one. Inside the Athena one, I already created the place Athena results. Make sure you have that extra forward slash there afterwards or else the result location will not work. Select OK, everything looks OK. Select Save, that issue disappears. OK, and now we have the results location added to S3. The next thing we want to do is add that data that we previously uploaded. So go to Connect Data Source. We're going to do S3 and we want to clear, query the Glue Data Catalog as our Metastore or use the Glue Data Catalog as our Metastore. Connect to AWS Glue. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth here on what the Glue Data Catalog is or how AWS Glue works. There's other videos in this channel, um, so please go check them out. I'll put a couple of links below and you can get more in-depth information. But for now, just follow along. So this is just going to be Athena Crawler. And essentially what we're doing here is storing the metadata to tell Athena how to query. We want to use data stores and crawl all folders. We want it to be S3. Then we have to go find that bucket we set up earlier that contains our data. So in this case, it's in Johnny Athena, in the data and just highlight the data itself. Don't click on the CSV, just the data and hit select. Then go next, add another data store. No, need a service rule for it. So I'm just gonna call this one Athena crawler delete. So I remember to delete, uh, spell crawler wrong there. So just spell that correctly and hit next run on demand database let's add a database let's call it demo in this example and create then go next then go finish find the athena crawler that i just set up and hit run because it's on demand so that's it off and running it takes a couple of minutes to find that table don't worry if you don't understand what was going on there just follow along the instructions and hitting next quite a, a lot and then we'll pick it up when this is done and we'll query our data Okay, that took a couple of minutes, and as you can see, one table's created. It's still stopping, but it doesn't matter. So let's just go have a quick click, go into tables, and it's created one called data. And as you can see, it has all the names picked up. You can see as well that there's 744 records in that table, just out of interest. Back on the Athena, go to query editor. Now what we should see is our table, if we go to the demo database, you can see data. You can see the names in it. If you click these three dots here on the little menu and you go preview table, our first query is run. So you can see how quick it is to see data in Athena and you have to use that AWS glue crawler to set it up. Just another quick query to prove it works. So let's say that uh, where IP equals that number and that will have to be in quotes because it's a string and we'll run that query. And again, you can see it's bringing me back that row. So that's everything for today, guys. I've been Johnny Chivers, as usual. I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.